Monday, Nick Fury and Black Widow are driving a car. Nick tells Natasha about the Avengers initiative, the idea to assemble a team of unique people. Natasha interrupts his speech because she has heard it many times. The Widow believes that taking Stark into the team is a mistake. Nick in response reminds the spy that he once recruited into his team her. Even though she worked for the Russians, Nick and Natasha arrive at the diner. Tony Stark is sitting on the roof of the building in an ogre donut inn. An Iron Man suit, Nick asks Tony to come down and talk. Fury offers Stark to join the Avengers team in the cafe. Tony does not want to participate in this farce. Nick notices Stark on his neck traces of toxic poisoning and orders Natasha to inject medicine. The widow inserts the drug into Stark's neck. Tony feels worse and falls to the floor. Natasha checks his pulse and reports that Stark is dead. Tuesday, inside a large crater in the ground lies Thor's hammer. Agent Coulson calls Fury and reports what happened. Fury at this time watches as the Black Widow is accompanied by a squad of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Nick talks to Natasha alone. He is sure that she did not kill Stark. Nick gives the Widow a syringe and asks her to investigate. Natasha is surrounded by the guards are put in a van and the door is locked. The Widow, handcuffed, is chatting with the escort. At one point she takes off the handcuffs and gives them to the guard. Then Natasha starts beating the guards. The driver and the commander of the guards are sitting in the cab. Hearing the sounds of a fight, the commander orders the car to stop. He opens the door of the van and sees that all the guards are lying unconscious, and the widow ran away. Fury and Hawkeye are talking near the hammer. Barton reports that the strange hammer radiates strong energy and no one can lift it. Fury believes that someone should come for such an artifact. At this moment, an unknown man incapacitates the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents one by one. Coulson finds one of the agents and informs Fury and Barton about it. Fury comes to the command center. Hawkeye climbs up on a crane to observe what is happening, approaches the hammer Thor. Hawkeye reports that the enemy is in his sights. Fury orders not to shoot. Thor reaches for the hammer, but then an arrow pierces his chest. Barton assures that he did not shoot. Fury approaches Thor's body. Barton's arrow sticks out of Thor's chest. All agents aim at Hawkeye. Barton is sitting in the cell with his head on his knees. Fury and Coulson are talking at the camera. Nick says that the man killed by Barton is not from Earth and judging by the blood test he is more than a thousand years old. Nick goes into the camera to talk to Clint, but Barton falls to the floor of the camera. The guards assure that in the camera no one was allowed through. Nick and Coulson are looking at two corpses in the morgue. Hawkeye and Thor are dead. Coulson sniffs and notices that Thor even now smells like lavender. Wednesday. At the Virginia Institute, Black Widow meets Betty Ross. She asks Betty to examine the syringe that Fury gave her. Dr. Ross examines the syringe through a microscope and reports that the medicine did not even come out of the syringe and could not kill Stark. Betty says that it looks like a small bullet was fired from the syringe. At this moment, a call rings. Fury informs Natasha that Barton is dead. It looks like the Mysterious One is destroying everyone who got on Fury's list of Avengers. Now only Bruce Banner and Natasha herself remain on the list. Natasha says she seems to have found Banner. Bruce is hiding in a closet in Dr. Ross' laboratory. Natasha tells them both that they need to immediately leave. Coulson returns to the S.H.I.E.L.D. base when the Asgard army led by Loki appears in front of him. Fury comes to negotiate with Loki. The God of Deception is going to destroy our world for killing Thor. At this moment, Natasha calls Fury. She says that General Ross is going to attack them with a banner with a detachment of soldiers. Fury offers Loki team up to find Thor's killer and the rest of the heroes. Loki gives Nick time until dawn. Someone shoots Banner and he turns into the Hulk. The Hulk begins to smash the military, scatter their cars. Betty tries to stop her father. Suddenly the Hulk begins to inflate and then explodes in a cloud of green dust. Betty falls to her knees and cries. At night the Widow enters the library and studies Files' shield. Someone is attacking her. The Widow is fighting with someone very small. She manages to dial Fury's number and tell him that it's all about hope. In a small diner, Fury listens to a message from Natasha. Coulson comes to him and says that only one Fury, Nick, remains from the entire list of Avengers. He gets into the car and takes an old pager out of the glove compartment, then puts it back and drives away. Fury arrives at the parking lot of the Asgardians and demands to take him to Loki. Thursday, Nick Fury is standing at the grave of Hoyt Van Dyne. Hank Pym approaches him. Hank blames Fury and the whole shield for the death of his daughter. Pym attacks Fury, but Nick repels all his attacks. Pym does not expect such a rush from Nick, but continues to attack. Pym is surrounded by copies of Fury. Hank tries to escape by shrinking, 
but he freezes into an icicle. Fury turns into Loki. The god of deception overcame Pym. The Asgardians handcuff Pym and take him away. Fury says that Loki can take Thor's hammer and go home, but Loki decides to stay on Earth longer. Friday, at the UN headquarters, Loki declares that he is the supreme ruler of the Earth. Fury and Coulson stand at the coffins of the Avengers. Nick leaves. Fury finds Captain America's shield in the ice. Captain Marvel appears behind him and asks who he has to fight. Dr. Stephen Strange arrives for his girlfriend Christine Palmer, and together they go on Voronoi the Way. Stephen has to hand over the award for conducting complex operations. Stephen wants to overtake the rider in front of them, a van, and into oncoming traffic ahead he spots racing right into their car and manages to avoid the accident. But back then they cuts the other car. Strange falls of a cliff. In a car crash Christine dies. Stephen mourns over the coffin of his friend. He arrives in. Come Mirage and begins to study magic. He trains to control time through the eyes of Agamotto, Wong, and the Ancient warn him that manipulation of time and very dangerous. After the death of the Ancient Strange saves the Earth from Dormammu and become the supreme sorcerer of the Earth. However, thought about Christine leave him. One night, Wong finds Strange in one of the halls of the Sanctum. Stephen says that today is exactly two years since killed Christina. Wong goes to put the kettle on. Stephen activates his eyes and moves over time. The same evening, when the accident occurred, he again sees Christine, coming back on the same road. But now Stephen is not, trying to overtake the van. But the car crashes into them again and they fall off a cliff. Christina dies again. Stens returns in the past. Now he chooses to travel the other way, but again gets into an accident. Christina is dying again. Stephen comes back in time. He repeats the owl again and again, but each time Christine dies. Stephen is kneeling by a broken car. He is in despair. The Ancient One appears to him. She says that Christina's death is the point of no return. It cannot be changed. Without this death, Stephen would not have become a wizard and could not have defeated Dormama. Strange wants to change this. He uses the eye again. But the Ancient One attacks him. Stephen finds himself in the jungle. He sees a man and tries to talk to him. But the man does not answer and silently leaves. Stephen follows him. He sees a strange temple and moves to the entrance using a portal. He falls into a pit and there again meets a mysterious man who takes him to the library of Cagliostro. Stephen begins to study ancient books. He is interested in changing time. The only way to break the point of no return is the absorption force of other beings. It causes the huge creature to absorb his power, but the creature grabs Stephen's tentacles. Strange comes up in the room Aubin. He says that the creatures will not voluntarily share power. It is necessary to take. Stephen reopens the portal and begins to absorb the power of different beings. Creatures become more and more powerful. Stephen gaining more and more power. So the days pass and weeks, Stephen calls. The first creature, and now she easily absorbs his power. Stephen comes to Aubin. He dies of old age. Strange wants to give the Aubin eternal life, but he refuses. Being in this universe was not one Stephen Strange. In the night, when one of the Stevens decided to change the past, the second went to drink tea with Wong. Stephen this morning came out of the vault and saw that the world is destroyed. He is the spirit of Ancient. She says that the crash is to blame Stephen. Ancient shared Stevens. Now Stephen must stop a second. The strange, Stephen said with Wong. Wong defends Stephen's spell. Stephen falls through a portal and finds himself in an empty room. The evil comes to him strange. Stephen says that Christina cannot return. Evil strange says that he sacrificed everything to save Christina, becoming the only unified. Together they will be able to save Christine. Stephen believes that because of his arrogance, Strange just going to destroy the world. The evil Strange long ago lost my mind. Strange to attack Stephen starts the battle of sorcerers. Spell Vishanti protects Stephen from the attack of the evil twin. But in the end, the evil Strange draws Stephen in the illusion. There is Christine tries to convince Stephen that they can be together. However, Stephen knows this is a lie. Evil Strange takes the protection spell, absorbs, and Stephen. Two of Doctor Strange come together. Strange uses the Eye of Agamotto and destroys the point of no return. He gives life to Christine, but he is Stephen turned and creepy monster. Christina horrified by what he saw. The world around them collapses. Stephen tries to stop the catastrophe. He sees the Observer and asks him to fix it. The Observer refuses to intervene. The darkness engulfs Christine and Stephen. Inside a huge crystal, Stephen holds Christina in her arms. She dies again. Crystal disappears in the darkness. In the Sanctum Sanctorum, empty chair by the Supreme Magician. 
Dear friends, thank you for watching, like and subscribe to the channel, this is important to me.